Diamonds have long been a symbol of elegance, wealth, and success. But have you ever wondered where diamonds come from and how they go from rough stones to the dazzling gems we admire in rings and necklaces? In this video, we'll uncover the entire fascinating process of how rough diamonds are excavated from the earth, cut, polished, and graded before becoming the stunning gemstones that adorn our jewelry. Subscribe now for more fascinating insights and hit the bell icon to never miss out on our latest videos. The history of diamonds dates back over two millennia. First discovered in Asia, diamonds were revered for their mysticism. Ancient civilizations believed that these gemstones had magical properties, using them as religious talismans thought to ward off evil and bring good fortune. Their use as symbols of power and status was widespread, yet the perception of diamonds took a significant turn in the 20th century. A diamond is forever. In 1947, the De Beers Company launched its now iconic A Diamond Is Forever campaign. This marketing campaign forever linked diamonds with love, specifically through the diamond engagement ring. Today, diamonds are not only symbols of romantic devotion, but have also become representations of prestige and success. In modern times, diamonds are a staple of hip-hop culture, often worn as bling to showcase wealth and social status. Beyond their cultural significance, diamonds also represent one of nature's most extraordinary wonders. These precious gems are the result of complex geological processes, and over time, human ingenuity has enabled us not only to unearth them, but also to replicate their formation in labs. Natural Diamond Formation Diamonds are composed of carbon, the same element found in pencil leads. However, the transformation from carbon to diamond is a rare and highly specialized process. Deep beneath the Earth's surface, about 100 miles down, temperatures can reach a scorching 2,372 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures can be as high as 870,000 pounds per square inch. Over millions of years, this intense heat and pressure force the carbon atoms into an extremely tight arrangement, forming a crystal lattice structure, essentially the blueprint of a diamond. Interestingly, the color of some diamonds doesn't come from any change in their formation. Instead, it's caused by additional elements trapped within the carbon lattice. For instance, nitrogen is responsible for diamonds' yellow hues, while boron and hydrogen can result in pink, blue, and even green diamonds. These impurities, instead of diminishing the beauty of the stone, add a unique touch, making each diamond one of a kind. Volcanoes Nature's Diamond Elevator Diamonds are formed under extreme pressure and temperature deep within the Earth's mantle millions of years ago. However, these precious stones don't just stay hidden in the depths forever. Volcanoes play a crucial role in transporting these treasures to the surface. The process begins when volcanic eruptions occur, creating what we call kimberlite pipes, which are vertical pathways that act as natural elevators for diamonds. These volcanic eruptions push the diamonds up from their deep subterranean homes to be found by those lucky enough to search for them. What is kimberlite? Kimberlite, named after Kimberley, South Africa, where it was first discovered in 1869, is a unique type of rock that forms in the Earth's mantle. It is the primary source of diamonds, as it often carries these gemstones within it. Over time, scientists discovered that kimberlite pipes act like geological highways, carrying diamonds from deep beneath the Earth's crust to the surface. These pipes are formed by rare volcanic eruptions that are incredibly deep and violent, far different from the eruptions we see today. Kimberlite pipes occur when volcanic magma, which has traveled from deep within the earth, erupts violently through the surface. This magma carries with it a mixture of molten rock, gas, and sometimes diamonds. As the eruption cools and solidifies, it forms a narrow vertical column of kimberlite rock which can extend several hundred meters into the earth. Over time, these pipes can be weathered by wind and water, eventually leaving behind pockets of diamonds that can be mined. It is thought that these eruptions took place millions of years ago, with the last kimberlite eruption occurring approximately 30 million years ago. Today, kimberlite pipes are considered to be one of the richest sources of natural diamonds. How Kimberlite Pipes Formed the process of kimberlite formation begins deep within the Earth's mantle, around 150 to 450 kilometers, 93 to 280 miles, beneath the surface. 
At these depths, the conditions are ideal for the creation of diamonds. The combination of extreme pressure, about 45,000 times atmospheric pressure, and temperatures ranging from 1,000 degrees Celsius to 1,300 degrees Celsius. 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,372 degrees Fahrenheit is enough to form diamonds out of carbon atoms. Over time, molten rock, known as magma, rises to the Earth's surface. In the case of kimberlite, the magma erupts violently, creating a pipe-like structure that transports both volcanic material and diamonds to the surface. The eruption is so powerful that it creates a narrow cylindrical pipe of kimberlite rock that is rich in diamonds and other minerals. However, these eruptions are incredibly rare and have only occurred under the right conditions, allowing kimberlite pipes to be distributed globally. While kimberlite deposits can be found worldwide, significant sources of kimberlite pipes are concentrated in certain regions, like Africa, Canada, and Australia. Mining for Diamonds While nature has provided the diamonds, it takes a considerable amount of effort and technology to extract them from kimberlite pipes. Diamond mining, particularly kimberlite mining, is a complex and labor-intensive process. Open Pit Mining the most common method used for kimberlite mining is open pit mining. This technique involves digging massive open pit mines to access the diamond-bearing kimberlite pipes. These pits are often hundreds of feet deep and can span many acres in width. Mining companies use heavy machinery such as giant drills and excavators to break up the hard kimberlite rock and remove it in large quantities. Once the kimberlite is extracted, it is processed to extract the diamonds. The material is crushed and sorted with valuable diamonds being separated from the waste rock. Given the high cost of diamond mining, companies must process vast amounts of kimberlite ore to obtain a small yield of diamonds. In fact, for every ton of kimberlite mined, only about one gram of diamonds can be recovered. Alluvial Mining In addition to kimberlite mining, another method used to mine diamonds is alluvial mining. This process is quite different from traditional mining, and it is often used when diamonds are found in riverbeds or coastal areas. Alluvial mining is similar to panning for gold, but on a much larger scale. In alluvial mining, diamond-bearing kimberlite deposits have been eroded by water over thousands or millions of years. As the material is washed away from the original site, it accumulates in riverbeds or along the coast. Miners use machines like sluice boxes and dredges to sift through the layers of soil and silt, searching for diamonds. Alluvial mining is often done in more remote locations where the kimberlite pipes have been naturally worn away by water over time. This method allows for easier extraction of diamonds since the material has already been broken down and transported, but it is also a much less efficient process as diamonds are more scattered and mixed with other materials. Challenges of Diamond Mining Despite the advanced technology used in kimberlite mining, the process remains difficult and expensive. For one, diamonds are rarely found in pure form, and miners must sift through tons of material to find them. Furthermore, the extraction of diamonds from kimberlite is a lengthy and challenging process that involves breaking down dense rock and separating valuable stones from other materials. Additionally, the environmental impact of diamond mining is a significant concern. Open pit mining creates large amounts of waste material, and the destruction of natural habitats can have lasting effects on the local ecosystem. As a result, many mining operations are taking steps to mitigate their environmental footprint using more sustainable methods and engaging in reclamation projects to restore areas that have been impacted by mining activities. The Role of Volcanoes in the Diamond Industry Volcanoes, through their kimberlite pipes, play an indispensable role in bringing diamonds to the surface. Without these natural elevators, it would be impossible for diamonds to be found and extracted. The rare nature of kimberlite eruptions makes these diamonds highly coveted, and the mining process continues to be one of the most challenging and costly in the world. While the majority of diamonds are extracted from kimberlite pipes, other sources, such as alluvial mining, also provide a significant portion of the global diamond supply. 
Whether mined from ancient volcanic pipes or found in riverbeds, diamonds continue to be one of the most sought-after and valuable materials on Earth, and the role of volcanoes in creating these remarkable gemstones is an essential chapter in the story of their journey from the Earth's depths to jewelry stores around the world. Processing the Diamonds once the diamond-bearing kimberlite or alluvial deposits are collected, they are transported to a processing plant. The first step in the process is to crush the material into smaller pieces. Then, a series of advanced techniques are used to separate the diamonds from the surrounding rock. Dense Media Separation this method utilizes a solution of ferrosilicon particles mixed with water. The density of this mixture is adjusted so that it's slightly higher than that of diamonds. The less dense materials sink while the diamonds float to the top, making it easy for workers to extract them. X-ray sorting. A more modern technique, X-ray sorting takes advantage of the differing X-ray absorption properties of gemstones. When the diamond-bearing material is passed through an X-ray beam, the diamonds absorb the rays differently than the surrounding material. Using this property, diamonds can be identified and isolated automatically by machines, which then eject them using jets of air or water. The quest to create lab diamonds. While the mining process is labor-intensive and costly, there's also been a growing interest in creating diamonds in laboratories. In the 1950s, scientists like Tracy Hall made the first successful attempts to create diamonds synthetically. However, it wasn't until 1971 that General Electric scientists managed to consistently produce gem-quality diamonds. These lab-grown diamonds are chemically, physically, and optically identical to natural diamonds, but they're much more affordable and can be produced without the environmental impact of traditional mining. There are two primary methods for creating synthetic diamonds. High pressure, high temperature, HPHT, and chemical vapor deposition, CVD. HPHT. In the HPHT method, a small seed of natural or synthetic diamond is placed in a capsule with graphite or carbon. This capsule is subjected to extreme heat, about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, and high pressure, around 6 gigapascals, replicating the environment deep in the Earth's mantle. The carbon dissolves into the diamond seed and crystallizes, forming a larger diamond. CVD. In CVD, a mixture of gases like methane and hydrogen is introduced into a reaction chamber. The gases are ionized using microwave energy, radio frequency, or plasma to create carbon ions. These ions then settle on a small diamond seed, crystallizing into diamond layers. The result is a diamond that closely mimics natural diamonds with the added benefit of being more controlled in terms of quality and size. Cutting and polishing the diamonds. Once a rough diamond is formed, it must undergo cutting and polishing to reach its final brilliance. Diamonds are known for their total internal reflection, which causes light to bounce within the stone and create the sparkling effect we associate with them. To maximize this effect, diamond cutters must carefully cut the diamond into facets that optimize light dispersion. The cutting process involves specialized tools. A cleaving saw or brooding machine is used to lay the foundation, while laser cutters allow for precision detailing. After the rough shape is established, the polishing stage begins. Polishing is done on a rotating cast iron wheel coated with diamond powder. This smooths out rough edges and prepares the diamond for its final brilliance. Diamond Grading Once the diamond is polished, it is graded by a gemological institute like the Gemological Institute of America, GIA. The grading process is based on the four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carat weight. Cut. The cut refers to how well the diamond's facets are crafted. A high-quality cut ensures light travels through the diamond in a way that maximizes its brilliance. Color. Diamond color is graded on a scale from D, colorless, to Z, light yellow or brown. The closer a diamond is to colorless, the higher its grade. Clarity. This measures the presence of internal flaws, inclusions, or external blemishes. The fewer imperfections, the higher the clarity grade. Carat weight. Carat weight refers to the size of the diamond, with one carat equaling 0.2 grams. Comparing natural and lab-grown diamonds. 
Natural diamonds and lab-grown diamonds are essentially identical in appearance and chemical composition, but there are key differences. Lab-grown diamonds tend to have fewer inclusions, and they are often less expensive than their natural counterparts. Additionally, lab-grown diamonds avoid the ethical and environmental concerns associated with mining. Diamonds continue to captivate us, not just for their beauty, but for the incredible journey they take from deep within the earth to the stunning gems we wear. Whether mined naturally or created in a lab, diamonds are an impressive testament to both nature's power and human ingenuity. Their enduring appeal shines brightly in multiple industries, from jewelry to cutting tools, demonstrating that their brilliance is more than just skin deep. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the fascinating world of diamonds, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more incredible content.